Sarah and today I'm going to be doing my April week 5 reading vlog. The month is almost over and I was having not the best month, but last week I felt like I had a pretty great reading week. So if you missed that reading vlog, I will link it up in the cards for you guys. But as always, I'm going to start this reading vlog off with the books that I'm currently reading. First, I've been reading Shorefall by Robert Jackson Bennett. I am almost done with it. Like I just have one part left and so far I'm really enjoying it. There's a lot that is brought up in this book that is incredibly interesting it definitely feels a little bit like a fantasy sci-fi crossover and i really like it like i really really like it and i'm excited to see how this book ends also i've been reading memories of ice by stephen erickson or i should rather say i started memories of ice by stephen erickson i haven't made any progress over it in the last like two weeks or so and that's because i've been pretty stressed out recently and i've been reaching more for easy reads and memories of ice or any malazan book really is not what you would call an easy read but I do plan on making progress on it this week because I've been having a much better week and this past weekend has been great for like self-care and all of that good stuff so I'm definitely excited to make progress on it this week also as you guys know I have been rereading the Harry Potter series I'm currently on Goblet of Fire which is the fourth book for those of you guys who don't know that. I've been reading the illustrated edition while annotating the paperback. And I haven't gotten super far into this, as you can see, like I just started it a couple days ago, but I'm really enjoying this so far. This is the first like big Harry Potter book that I'll be annotating. So it should be interesting to see how long this takes me because I mean, Prisoner of Azkaban took me a good three weeks and that's a pretty small Harry Potter book. So this one being significantly longer, I feel like will take me longer, but I also feel like I'm reading the chapters faster. I don't know, we'll see. But I'm really excited to continue on with this because I've been having so much fun doing this. Also, I finally started my fantasy book series challenge for the month of April with The Daughters of the Forest by Juliet Marillier. So far I'm enjoying this. I really like the writing in here. It's it's so beautifully written and it reminds me a little bit of Robin Hobbs writing style which I really like. That being said it is really slow like really really slow and I haven't really gotten super into it yet. I have heard that this book is really good and one of Juliet Marillier's best books so I'm excited for that but I don't know how it's going yet. I do like the atmosphere I get while I'm reading this book but I have a feeling that this is going to take me a lot longer to read than just one week. And that's really all I have to finish this book. But at least I've started it. And I've also been reading Marion Winterborn by Lisa Claypest. I haven't made too much progress on this one last week. I'm right there. And last week I had just started this book. This is more of when I get super stressed out and I just want to read something that I don't have to think about at all, I read this book. And that's worked for me so far, so I'm gonna continue doing that. This is a historical romance novel. It's the second book in the Ravenel series, and I don't read historical romance that often, but when I do find a series that I enjoy, I usually end up reading the entire series like in one go, so I don't know. We'll see how this goes. So far, I'm not liking this one as much as the first one, though. So it's still Saturday, but I made a lot of progress on Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire by J.K. Rowling. As you can see, there are a lot more tabs here. There's also a lot more orange. Like before the little break I just had, it was mostly just green tabs because apparently Goblet of Fire is where all of the world building happened. But there was a lot of orange because a lot of things for the plot happened because that's my orange tab is plot. In case you're wondering, if you see red on here, that's character. Orange is plot, green is world building, blue is writing style, and then yellow is theme, which you don't see a whole lot of yellow on here. I think I have like one yellow tab. Actually, for the most part, you don't see a lot of yellow at all, even though like there is a lot of theme work, just not as much in the earlier books as it is in the later books. And generally all the theme work happens like towards the end of the book, not as much as the beginning. And the beginning tends to be a lot of characterization and world building, which is why there's so much orange and green here. As I've been reading the illustrated books, as I read the chapters, I've been sharing the illustrations from those chapters with you guys. So I have a lot of illustrations to share with you guys from the last few chapters that I just read. Okay, so we left off on chapter seven, Bagman and Crouch. And the first illustration 
version we have is of the campsite at the Wizarding World Cup. I absolutely love this one, especially the sky in the background because this is like at sunrise. It's gorgeous and it's beautiful. It reminds me of the Diagon Alley spreads from the previous books because there's just so much going on in this one that you can stare at it for a long time and still not get everything that is happening in this picture but it is gorgeous and I love it. Then over here we have a picture of Victor Crump, which reminds me in my last vlog, I talked about this other picture from the previous chapter. Let me show you guys. So this is the previous chapter for the port key. And in the corner down here, there's Hermione talking to this boy, which didn't really make sense because this scene is of when the Weasleys, Harry and Hermione meet the Diggories on that hill to get the port key so i thought maybe it was hermione and cedric but that didn't really make sense because they didn't really interact but this boy right here looks a lot like victor crumb a lot so maybe they put the illustration in the wrong place possibly because it would make sense for hermione to talk to victor crumb just not in this part of the story let me know what you guys think in the comments anyways we got a picture of victor crumb well a picture of a poster of Victor Crumb. I love this one. So this is Ludo and Crouch and the disparities there are just perfect. They look so completely different. It's perfect. I love how they're on the same page. Mind you, in the scene, they're also on the same page. Like this whole section right here is talking about Ludo Bagman. And then this whole section over here is talking about Barty Crouch. And the sign behind Crouch and everything is just perfect for their characters. Then we're moving on to the next chapter, chapter eight, the Quidditch World Cup. So first we have a picture of the box at the top, which just has a bunch of different characters. And you can see Harry, Ron, and Hermione down here. And behind them, you have the Malfoys. And of course, Ludo Bagman over here in the corner. And then a bunch of other things. And notably, you can see Winky the house elf right there, which is very cool. I will say though, Winky was supposed to be right behind Harry, Ron, and Hermione, not the Malfoys, but whatever. I will let that one slide. Then we have this funny illustration of the referee for the Quidditch match. This gorgeous, gorgeous full page illustration of what's going on in the Quidditch match. It is beautiful and I really love it. Then we have chapter nine, The Dark Mark. This has to be one of the best and yet still most disturbing illustrations in this book so far because this is when we have the Death Eaters or maybe Death Eaters hanging the muggles upside down. Super creepy. The darkness in this illustration and just the silhouettes of the hands are super creepy. And of course the actual illustrations of the muggles are not great for my head, but the illustration itself is brilliant. And then we find Draco in the forest and I love this illustration. Not Draco himself, but like the trees and stuff over here is just kind of magical looking and I really Really like it and then we have the dark mark because why not it's it is a gorgeous illustration even if the dark mark is not very pretty itself and that's all I have for you guys so far I am enjoying the illustrations for Goblet of Fire I was a little worried that the illustrations wouldn't be as good because they have so much less space but I'm still pretty happy with these like honestly I'm a little bit more happy with these than some of the earlier books that being said there is a lot more that happens earlier in this book than in some of the earlier books so that might be why so it is Saturday May 2nd and yes I did say Saturday meaning I did not vlog all week like literally all week I haven't vlogged at all and that's because near the beginning of the week I fell into kind of a reading slump I was falling into a reading slump I was I was reading Shorefall by Robert Jackson Bennett I didn't realize at the time that I was falling into a reading slump I kind of started to realize it when it got towards the end of the audiobook and I ended up having to reread the end of that audiobook four times because the first two times I was just not paying attention and I was just like okay I don't actually know what happened so then I read it a third time and I realized like I was not emotionally attached to anything that was happening in that audiobook so I was kind of like I don't think I read it correctly or whatever. So I read it a fourth time and then I was just like, okay, I know what happened. I just like, I just don't care. And that's when I should have known that I was in a reading slump because Shorefall is arguably a very good book. I just didn't feel very much for it. I've already posted my review on this so you guys could go check that out. But it was not the reading experience that I was expecting from it. And I do think it's partially because I was falling into a reading slump. And I feel like I should have known that this was happening 
because starting around like the third week of the month, I like stopped following my TBR completely and was just mood ready. When that happens, it's usually because I'm falling into a reading slump. This happens every so often and they last different periods of time. Like I've had a reading slump last only a few days before. I've had one that lasted five years. So I don't know how long this one's gonna last, but basically what I consider a slump is when I'm enjoying books, but I don't actually wanna pick them up when I'm not reading them, if you know what I mean. Or there are books that I really wanna read that I start reading, I think they're good, but I don't wanna continue on reading them for whatever reason. So after I finish Shorefall, I try to start quite a few more books. So I try to start A Memory Called Empire by Arcady Martin, which was on my TBR and is a book that I've been anticipating for a while. And it was nominated for Best Sci-Fi for the BookTube SFF Awards and for Best Debut, I believe. So I was really excited to read this book. I read the prologue and I was really excited about the prologue, but after that, I felt zero inclination inclination to pick this book up back again. So I decided to put it back down and just not ever put it as currently reading on Goodreads. So I thought maybe because it's sci-fi, I'm just not in the mood for sci-fi, then I'll try a fantasy book. So I picked up The Emperor's Blade and I read like the first few pages of it and I got distracted by something and like arguably I liked the few, first few pages. Like I arguably liked it, but I just never felt like picking it back up again. So I put this one down again also. So I thought maybe it was just the pressure of trying to read my April TBR in the last week of April because I didn't get to most of the TBR books earlier on because I was just mood reading. So I decided, you know what? I've already posted my May TBR. I'm just gonna give up on my April TBR and start on my May TBR. That's fine, right? So I decided to pick up The Last Magician by Lisa Maxwell, which was the book I was like most excited for for my May TBR because this was one that I had been planning to pick up in April because it's about time travel, but I didn't end up picking up in April. So I put it on my May TBR. It wasn't on my April TBR. And I was really excited for this. And mind you, I was enjoying this because it reminded me a lot of the Firebird trilogy by Claudia Gray, which is the YA sci-fi series that I liked a lot more than I was expecting to. So I read the first few chapters and I got really excited for this. And then like, I just stopped paying attention while I was reading it. And I was just like, okay, maybe I'm just not in the mood for this type of book because it, it's fantasy but it's not like high fantasy and high fantasy is like my comfort zone so I decided to try some high fantasy that was on my TBR so I picked up Air of Fire by Sarah J Mass which is high fantasy and like I almost immediately put it back down because I just wasn't feeling it even though like this is the type of book that I should love I just wasn't feeling it so yeah I tried to pick up four books like I tried four different books to pick up and just didn't get into and then I tried to pick up some of the books that I was currently reading. So I was in the middle of Daughter of the Forest and Marrying Winterborn. Daughter of the Forest, even though I was enjoying it and I was getting reminiscent ideas of like one of my favorite authors, like the writing style is really similar and I really liked where this book was going. I just had no motivation to read it also. And I got about two sentences into Marrying Winterborn and just was like, nope, this is not happening. I have issues with this book anyway, so that wasn't happening. And I considered for about two seconds to try and pick up Memories of Ice and just decided to dismiss that idea because that book is really hard to read and when I'm falling into a reading slump like that, it's just not gonna happen. So on Goodreads, I created a new shelf because I'm not gonna call these DNFs. I just think I need to start other books that are not these books. So I put a new shelf on pause for Memories of Ice, Daughters of the Forest, and Marrying Winterborn. So all three of those I was currently reading. I changed it to on pause status because I will get back to them eventually. I just don't feel like reading them right now. So by that time, I was pretty sure I was was in a reading slump. Like I understood that I was in a reading slump and it just wasn't happening. So I decided to do other things for a while, like watch a lot of TV. Mind you, my sleep schedule was all over the place because this week I had like one day off every other day and I was working night shifts. So like my sleep schedule was completely out of whack. So my timing was kind of weird too. So I decided, you know what? I'm just not in a reading mood. This is not gonna happen. I binge watched Tiger King on Netflix because why not? Everyone's talking about it anyway. It's a fantastic documentary, by the way. Highly recommend. All joking aside, I binge watched that. The other one on Netflix, uh, I think it's called Love is Blind. Reality TV just seems like the thing to get me out of a reading slump, right? So I started to feel better when I watched those shows. So I wanted to get back to reading. So what I normally do to get out of reading slumps is I reread one of my favorites. 
Problem is, I'm already in the middle of a reread of the Harry Potter series. Earlier in the week, the only thing I was reading was a little bit of shorefall listening to the audiobook and physically reading the Harry Potter series, which again, should have been a red flag to me that I wasn't picking up anything else physically except for Goblet of Fire. But I didn't catch on to it until later on, obviously. I still wanted something to read on audio. So I decided to pick up the book for my May TBR that I picked for my reread, which is The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. I listened to about the first chapter and then I put it down and then I binge read this entire book. The first couple of chapters, I was so emotional. Like I never remembered being emotional about this book. It's certainly not the first time I read it. And I don't think I was ever that emotional reading the series in any of my rereads either. I don't know what it was about it. I, it was, I know what it was. It was Prim. It was that iconic scene where Katniss volunteers for Prim. That scene, I just got so emotional during that scene. I don't even know how. I loved every second of this book. Like I loved every second of it and I read it in like one day. Mind you, I listened to the audiobook. So like it wasn't like I was physically reading the book. I know I had bought the, the paperback copy of this book to annotate it. Like that wasn't happening. I just wanted to read the book. So I finished two books. The first one was Shorefall. The second one was The Hunger Games this week. And because that book was working for me where no other books were, I decided to pick up Catching Fire. I'm about halfway through Catching Fire now. I'm almost done with it. I might be finishing it today. I might not be, but I'm enjoying this one as well. Not as much as the first one, which I didn't expect to enjoy this one as much as the first one, but I am enjoying it as well. I've always been Team Gale. Like I know, I'm weird. I've always been Team Gale. On this reread, I understand why people are Team Peta. Like I understand it now and I'm okay with it. So currently, all I'm reading is Harry Potter and the Hunger Games. And I do have a reread of the Wheel of Time series that is very long term that I'm on the fifth book of the Wheel of Time series. That's the one that I read at night before going to sleep. I only listen to like about half an hour at night, two to three times a week for the audiobooks. So like, it's not that much. So right now, all I'm doing is rereading. But you know what? That might be just how I feel right now. There's so many changes going on right now that I just feel really nostalgic. I think that's why I'm just in that mood right now. So for at least this week, this coming week, I don't plan on picking up any new books and just planning on rereading to get me out of this slump. What I'm gonna reread, I haven't decided yet. So obviously I'm in the middle of a Harry Potter reread and a Hunger Games reread. What else I might decide to pick up, I don't know. I think I'm gonna go with some of like my more nostalgic favorites that like I think about often even though it's been a while since I've read them just because that's just the only only thing I think that I'll actually be able to read right now because right now like I don't know I just I can't I can't read right now so let me finish my Hunger Games reread I'll probably end up rereading Goblet of Fire faster than I had planned to and then I'll probably pick up one other book this week that I'll switch between the audio and the physical book because I like doing that as well. So I haven't decided what that will be, but this past week has been like really, really weird. I honestly don't know if I'm gonna get a lot of books read next next month. Like as of right now, I can't see myself reading anything but Harry Potter and The Hunger Games and maybe one other series that like I have nostalgic feelings for. I mean, it was bound to happen sometime because I've literally haven't had like an actual reading slump where I went more than a few days without reading something new. I want to say like April 2018. I believe it was the month of April 2018. I didn't read any books in April and I feel like I was just due for one. So it's around the same time of year. So we'll see how much I get done in May. I have a feeling that I'm not going to read very much though. All I'm going to try and do is get out of the reading slump. So hopefully by like the second week of May, I can get back to my May TBR. We'll see though. I don't know if that's going to happen. So this has been kind of a weird video, but I hope you guys enjoyed it anyway. I post videos every Monday, Thursday, and Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern time so consider subscribing. I also post bonus videos if you want to be notified as soon as I upload you can click that little bell icon. If you like this video please give it a big thumbs up to support my channel. Also social media links are in the description down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!